Hey guys, in this week's tip, we're going to get back to taking a look at some of the promotional capabilities with an SMS. On tap this time, a request directly from a retailer that I met a few weeks back at one of our conferences. His tip was pretty basic, and it really revolved around offering a 30% discount on a single item within an order. Well, you know me, I'll show you how to do that, plus we'll add a few sprinkles to that and look at a couple different options as well. The key to this, though, was this retailer wanted to exclude items from a specific PID that he already had set up in his item file. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is what we're actually going to create here. And I'm going to do that in the POS. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration here, ring in a couple items in the sale. Like always, when I hit the subtotal key, the e-coupon is going to fire off if the criteria is met. Now, in this case, the criteria for this particular e-coupon is 30% off any single item in the order. By default, it's going to give that 30% off the lowest priced item. The buck fifty here, the 45 cents, if you do that quick math, you'll find out it's 30%. Now the second criteria for this electronic coupon that you can't see here on the POS screen is that it does exclude any item associated with promotion ID number 6. I'll show you how we do that over in SMS Pro. The two items I rang up here are not associated with promotion ID 6, so both of those are eligible according to the way that we set up the coupon. The reason it's set up here on the buck 50 is because that's the way SMS defaults to the lowest price item. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out this transaction, I'm going to ring one up with an item that includes promotion ID 6, and I'll show you how the promo doesn't work. Alright, so on this particular transaction, I've got two items set up on the order, both of them are included in promotion ID 6. I'll show you that when we hop over into Pro, you can see one already has a markdown. Now when I hit the subtotal key, you will not see the electronic coupon fire off, and there you go. I can go ahead and tender this baby out, but you can see the electronic coupon didn't fire because both of these items are included in promotion motion ID 6. Now let's hop over into Pro and I'll show you how to set all this stuff up. Alright, so I hopped over into Pro and I'm in a basic item cost view and I got rid of the cost screen here. I just expanded the price screen because we're setting this baby up to work on a coupon here. Now the first thing I want to do is show you all those items in my database that are included or grouped in promo ID number 6 down here. Now the way I'm going to do that is real simple. I'm going to put the cursor down here in the promo ID field which is in the POS table. I'm going to come up to the filter and I'm going to select Mr. Filter, give me where the cursor last was, which is way down here on PID, tell me all the items that have six in that field. I'm going to double tap enter, and here they all are. Now, I don't remember the exact items that we had on that transaction, but I know they were cereal bars. There was a Nutri-Grain, I think, and some Kellogg stuff. So you can see, all these items have promo ID six in that field. So those items are going to be the ones that are going to be excluded from any promo that we do in this particular coupon. Now, let me hop over over into the main item view of the coupon and we'll go through how to set this baby up. Alright, so I went ahead and brought up our item here that we're going to use for the electronic coupon. And you can see, and you guys have done a bunch of these, so I'm not going to go through it step by step, but I'll show you the important parts. We've set up the description to make sense to us. We've set up our POS table to include the sub number that we want, make sure we enable zero price. We hit store coupon here and we also tell that it's an electronic coupon here. In 3401, you're going to have this new drop down. Make sure you hit electronic coupon for this particular version. So the first main thing we're going to work on is a coupon link table. I'll drag it over here so we can see it nice and clear. Now mine's already filled out, but don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. In case you don't know how to get to this table, it's via the item menu, coupon link. That's going to give you this table. And a lot like the rest of the tables in SMS, you just hit the plus sign to create an entry. So when you hit the plus sign the first time, one of the first entries you'll want to create is right here. You'll double tap in and you'll get an option menu here to choose from. The one you'll want to pick is promo ID sales. And the code field is going to be the promotion ID, the PID, that you want to disallow from this coupon that we're creating. In my case, it's promo ID 6. Now, the rest of these fields are going to be default until we get out to the method here. So by default, I mean T is going to be populated, the 3 in the totalizer field will be populated, these others are going to be blank. When you come out here to method, double tap, and it's going to bring up a nice handy dandy menu for you choose from that menu, exclude this from the total. So what does that mean? It's excluding PID number six from this particular coupon that we're setting up. So that's one of those Homer Simpson moments where you just go, oh, that seemed pretty easy. And you know what it was, but I had to go in and test it myself. So we're all in the same boat. But when we do this, it prevents this 
PID from activating the coupon. Now, if you want to add another PID, let's say you got four or five or six of these things, PIDs that is, that you want to disallow, just add another line here, just like this, come right down here, go to Promo ID Sales, and do exactly what we did right back up here. So the next piece or criteria that we got to create here doesn't have to be done, but I did it just because I think it's going to make sense to you once we talk about it. I added another criteria, and from the drop-down list here, when I double tap, I selected Total Sales. In the code field, I selected one, so basically one sale, which is what we're doing in this case. I'm going to force the customer to buy at least a buck from me before he or she can get the 30% discount. In that case, if it was just a buck, it's 30 cents. What this will help with is the customer that comes in and you know buys a thing of candy or something that's 50 cents, and then you're having to do a promotion on that. Now, it's not a big deal. To me, it's just a little bit easier to put a minimum value on that to force the customer to buy something in order to get that 30% off promotion. You can make this whatever the heck it is that you want in terms of a minimum. And if you don't want it, just don't include it. And if you do include it and want to remove it, just come up here and hit minus and it's going to take that away. So based on our objectives that we looked at in the very, very beginning of this video, our coupon link table is set up. But let's say you want to take this basic coupon link table and compound it a bit to, to do something different. What you could do is tell the customer nothing in promo ID 6, you at least got to spend a buck, and now I want to add another criteria, and you have to buy an item from a specific sub, a specific department, whatever it may be, or it could be a specific item if that's what you want to do. So you have some options here by saying you have to not buy anything from promo ID 6, any of those items, they don't, they don't count toward this promo, you have to at least spend a buck and you got to buy something from a specific sub department. Now that's a pretty complicated and complex coupon, but it allows you to direct the customer's activity to wherever the heck it is that you want it to go. So that's just one way to take a simple coupon, throw some sprinkles on it, and jazz it up just a bit. But for now, let's go ahead and delete that requirement out, and let's hop over here to the price table, and I'll show you to do exactly what I showed you on the POS screens at the beginning. So the really good news, over here in the price table, we don't have a whole heck of a lot to do. Remember, the original requirement was a 30% discount. We just throw 30 down here in the percentage discount field, right under here under regular price, and then come down here to method, and I think this is a good practice for you, is go ahead and double tap. It's going to bring up a menu of a ton of items. In this case, we want to limit it by transaction. Now what that does is a couple things. It doesn't allow us to count this over a period of time for sure, but it also puts that single separate line item on the POS customer screen, operator screen, and on the receipt where it lists the coupon separately. If we don't include this here, it will attach the 30% discount to whatever is the lowest price item in the order. You can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. This is just a different way to approach it so you're calling out that 30% coupon and for sure you're and you're enabling that it's only used in the transaction at this particular moment. So I hop back over here to the POS to show you one final example and also to point out that limited by transaction field on the price table. This is what happens when you put limited by transaction. It calls out the coupon in a specific item. If we didn't have that, it would take this 30 cents and it would apply it right up here. You would see electronic coupon in red here, minus 30 cents. Now, why did it apply 30 cents? Well, look at the items we got. Remember, by default, SMS is choosing the lowest price item. This item up here, our rice item, is two for a buck is the way it's set up. We've got a limited discount quantity right now, and it's two for a buck. So we've got two items that are rung up for $2 here, and you can see it's taken 30% off of one of those. So even if you use package pricing, limited quantity pricing, that sort of thing, the tool is smart enough to understand one item, the lowest price item in the order. So that's pretty darn cool, and it's giving you some flexibility to take those promotions that may seem kind of vanilla, throw some caramel, some chocolate syrup, and even a cherry on top to just wow your customers. With both criteria met, that's it for this week's tip. Hopefully we've shown you a couple ideas that you can deploy within your store's programs yet today. Until next time, have a great day.